Hey all, uh, I wanted to make a video for Advent of Code Day 18, which I haven't posted a video for yet. Um, I did do a screen recording of me trying to solve it, uh, but I did was not able to solve part two uh, without looking up the answer in the megathread, basically. I spent like two hours. I did get part one at like, I don't know, place 300th or something. Uh, could not find a good solution to part two. And I don't know, did not think a video of me flying around for two hours would be that interesting. Although. If you would be interested, I could post it. Um, but it was a cool problem, and I did want to talk about uh, you know, how to solve it. Um, and I wrote up a nice uh, solution after the fact, you know, after I looked up how to do it and tried to understand that. Um, so let's talk about it. So uh, we're given, basically we're tracing out this path. Uh, Right, go x steps to the right, y steps down, you know, z steps left, whatever. Tracing out some path, uh, you know, starting and ending at the same place. And the question is, how many squares uh, are inside the path, including the path itself? And in part one, uh, all the numbers are pretty small, and in part two, the numbers are really big. Um, so part one. Uh, well, anyway, this is really a geometry problem. Um, and so let's see. So I think you know, I've written a long comment here with what I think is a good way to think about this, um, which is uh, rather than think about sort of grid squares, like the problem says, it's good to just think about uh, like points in a plane. Um, and you know, imagine uh, a point at the center of each grid square. Uh, that's a nice thing to do. Um, and then the problem is similar to you're trying to find the area of this like polygon made out of, of you know straight horizontal and vertical lines, although it's not quite that. Um, so why is it not quite that? Uh, well, basically, all of these points inside are part of the area of the polygon. But these points on the edge are not quite part of the area of the polygon because, like, half of you know, in this case, this square, half of it is inside the polygon. Right? I'm imagining the polygon going through the center of each of the squares. Half of it's inside and half of it's outside. But we want to count a full square. Um, so the difference, you know, between what's actually inside the polygon and the full square is like half a square, and that's true for like all of these sort of straight edges but it's not true for the corners. Um, but what is true for the corners is that they sort of come in pairs, right? Like this quarter, this square, a quarter of it is inside the polygon. This square, uh, three quarters of it is inside the polygon. Um, and that happens, I don't know, basically sort of most of the time, right? Like, I don't know, this one and this one pair off, this one and this one pair off. Uh, but there's actually four, the four actual corners don't have a pair. Uh, and those ones are just like three quarters of them is outside the polygon and only one quarter is inside. Um, and so I don't know, that's like a kind of an argument for Pick's theorem, basically, which is the, I don't know, <laughs> the sort of mathematical justification for what I'm going to say. Um, but like, it's, it's almost the case that we want the area of the polygon plus half the number of squares on the boundary, uh, and then plus one for the four corners. Uh, okay, so that was, you know, sketchy, maybe intuition. Uh, let's see some math to justify it. Um, so this is a cool theorem about, I don't know, grid polygons, maybe you could say, which is that the area is the number of interior points plus half the number of boundary points, minus one. So in our case, we don't want the area, right? What we actually want is the number of interior points plus the number of boundary points. Uh, so if you rearrange this formula, you get that the number of interior points is the area minus b over two plus one. And then we want not i, but i plus b. So that's a plus b over two plus one, uh, which is in fact like the correct formula to solve this problem. Uh, which is something that I did not know when I was trying to solve it. And so that was part of my confusion because it turns out it's easier to find the area than it is to find like this thing.
Uh, finding the perimeter is basically trivial. You just add up the length of all of the uh, sort of edges, um, which is not maybe totally obvious because like this very first step where we go over six actually covers seven grid squares, but this square is covered by this step and this step, and this square is covered by this step and this step. Uh, so if you just add up the lengths, you do get the right answer. Um, one way to think about this is like, consider this first step not actually covering this square. It covers this, these squares, and then the next step covers you know, these squares, but not this square. You can see every square is covered once if you count that way, and everything covers n squares. So anyway, the perimeter is the sum of the sort of lengths across all the commands. Um, and the area, we need some more math to compute. I think this is a really slick way of doing it, um, which I guess is, I don't know, a simple application of a like, I don't know, pretty advanced theorem called Gunn's theorem. Um, but what it amounts to is you sort of walk the path, keep track of your y coordinate, and whenever you go right, add your current y coordinate times n. When if you go left, subtract your current y coordinate times n, and that's it, um, which is like a really simple way to find the area. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, why is that true, by the way? I'm not going to be able to give a full answer, um, but like I don't know. Imagine just focusing on one column. Ugh, I can't highlight one column, but I'm, you know, consider this like second to last column, um, and we're just going to add and subtract rectangles to like make up, right? The actual column is like this and, well, this and this. And uh, you can think of it as we go right, as we cross over here, we add this enti the entire column, sort of plus. As we go left here, we subtract off this part. So now we just have this part. As we go right again, we add back in this part. Uh, and now we have the full thing that we want, right? And as we go here, we subtract off nothing. Um, so, yeah, we can think of like making up the shape sort of as positive and negative rectangles. And I don't know, if you count it up, the entire shape ends up with like a count of plus one, even though there's a lot of overlapping like pluses and minuses. Um, which, I don't know, I'm bad at visualizing, so I have a hard time sort of trusting that, but uh, I don't know, it is true. <laughs> um, and I think, I don't know, I think it sort of, sort of makes sense. Um, this like focus on a single column thing was the simplest way for me to Kind of follow it. Um, yeah, so what else is worth saying? Um, right, so you know, first you parse the input. In part one, we just read off you know, these first two things. In part two, the last digit here is the direction, and the other five digits are the length. So fine, There's some simple parsing for that. Um, and then we compute the perimeter, which is just add up the lengths, and we can compute the area, like so. And the final answer is just the area plus the perimeter over 2 plus 1. Um, as we argued from fixed theorem, and as I tried to argue from like uh, considering this polygon going through the centers of the points, like how much extra is there beyond just the area of the polygon? It's like essentially half of the grid squares on the perimeter, and of course all of the grid squares in the interior except for these four corners, which add another plus one, um, because sort of all the internal corners like get paired off you know, one quarter in, three quarters in, but the uh, so the sort of four external corners, because you're going around 360 degrees, they don't have a pair, they're, all, they're just three quarters in. Um, so, you know, the, by default things were half in, so three quarters is an excess of one quarter, there's four of them, so there's an excess of one, so that explains that plus one. Um, okay, yeah, I guess I also wrote up the shoelace formula, which is something I'd seen before but forgotten, which is a way of computing the area um, of a polygon from the vertices. So you can first compute the vertices and then compute the area. Um, and I think the justification for this is that it's sort of overlapping positive and negative triangles rather than rectangles. Um, yeah, but I think. I don't know, this one is a nicer formula, and also the rectangles are easier to think about, I think. Uh, okay, so that's all I had to say about day 18, and I will see you in a bit for day 20.